Got another video for the A-level chemistry multiple choice practice. So this is the fourth one for organic chemistry. Remember, there's a separate list for inorganic and physical, if you want to check that out. Hope you like the video, and if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel? As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video, if you want to try them first. Okay, so make a start. So we'll get the position of the double bond first. So you can see counting from here to that side, we'll get a two for the start of the double bond, where as if we count this way, we get a three. So we've got to go on the lower number. So it's a two in. So that rules out B and D. So next thing we need to do is determine whether it's the E or the Z isomer. So how do we do that? We look at the atoms directly bonded to the carbon of the double bond and we determine priority by atomic number. Higher atomic number means uh, priority. So carbon has got a higher atomic number than hydrogen. So that's the priority group on the left-hand carbon of the double bond. And then we've got carbon versus bromine. Bromine's got a much higher atomic number. So that's got priority on the right-hand carbon. So the priority groups are on opposite sides of the double bond. So it's the E isomer. So A is the answer. Moving on to number two, which statement is correct about bonds? So A, the CC double bond in ethane more polar than the CC single bond in ethane. That's wrong because neither of the bonds are polar because they're both made from carbon, which is the same atom. So there's no difference in electronegativity. Sigma bond stronger than pi bond, that's actually correct, so B was the answer. I'll just run through C and D um, just for revision. HCH bond angle in ethane is 109.5 degrees. The HCH bond angle in ethane is actually 120 degrees. So the bond angle in ethane is actually lower than the one in ethane. And D, a sigma bond is formed from sideways overlap of p orbitals. Nope, that's wrong, because sigma bonds form from the direct or end-to-end -end overlap of orbitals. Number three, testing your knowledge of reactions of organic functional groups. So first thing, we'll identify the functional groups in this molecule. So we've got a primary alcohol on the left-hand side, and obviously that's a carboxylic acid on the right. So now we've got those which reagent will not react with this molecule. Sodium cyanide methanol is actually the answer. It won't react with either of those functional groups, so we've got the answer straight away. But I'll just go through the others as well. So B, ethanol, alcohol, in presence of an acid catalyst. So that's the esterification reaction. So that can react with the carboxylic acid part. The um, acid anhydride in C, that's also um, an esterification reaction. That would react with the alcohol part and D concentrated sulfuric acid is going to dehydrate the alcohol part so it can react. Moving on to question four so just to quickly run through what I've written up here before we get into the question so potassium dichromate 6 is an oxidizing agent and when you oxidize under reflux a primary alcohol is converted to a carboxylic acid Secondary alcohol oxidized to a ketone, aldehyde oxidized to a carboxylic acid. And just a reminder that ketones and tertiary alcohols are not oxidized. So next thing we need to do is work out the functional groups in A, B, C and D. So there's the functional groups there and we're going to use the oxygen count in the product to get us the answer. So if we think about A, tertiary alcohol isn't oxidized, so we're left with that oxygen um, in the product. The aldehyde would be oxidized to a carboxylic acid, so there would be a total of three oxygens in the product of A, so that's not the answer. Moving on to B, secondary alcohol oxidized to a ketone, still just got one oxygen there, aldehyde to carboxylic acid. So we're going to have another three oxygens. So that's not the answer. Secondary alcohol is going to go to a ketone, one oxygen. Ketone isn't oxidized. Two oxygens, so that looks like it's going to be the answer. Um, primary alcohol oxidized to a carboxylic acid. 
as is the aldehyde. So that will have four oxygens in its product. So C was the answer. Moving on to number five. So I've drawn out the displayed formula, or kind of displayed formula for propane. So I always base my addition polymer monomers on an ethene structure, makes it really easy. So to go to the polymer chain or the repeat unit for the polymer chain, you just break the pi bond and put these continuous or end bonds on. So the repeat unit's gonna look like that. So which one of these is that? It's D. Moving on to number six, I think it's pretty nasty this one as well. So before I get into the answer, um, just what's gonna happen when you put an alcohol and an acid catalyst together? You're gonna remove the water molecule and you're gonna generate an alkene. So we need to see if these alkenes produce can show EZ isomerism. So the way I'll do it is take each of these um, alcohols in turn, you see A is already drawn up. We'll quickly look at what's gonna form and decide whether it can show EZ isomerism or not. So 3-methylbutantool looks like this. So what's gonna happen? Well, the OH is gonna come off and then hydrogen from an adjacent carbon atom. So we're gonna get these two alkenes here Neither of these can show EZ because on this carbon here, we've got two identical methyl groups. And on this carbon here of the double bond, we've got two identical hydrogens. So A is not right. Moving on to B, so there's pentanol. You're gonna just generate pentanoin. And again, you've got two hydrogens on that first carbon. So that can't show EZ isomerism either. There's the products for C, so can't have EZ because two hydrogens here. Can't have EZ on this one because we've got two methyl groups here. So D is obviously the right answer. Quickly explain why. So that's the product from the dehydration of heptan -4-ol. So this carbon here has got a hydrogen and this ethyl group, so they're different to each other. This carbon here has got hydrogen and this propyl group, so they're different from each other. So we can have EZ. Moving on to number seven. So which of the following reacts with ethanoic acid and with phenol? So thank you, exam board. A is actually the right answer. I'll just quickly explain why the other three aren't. So bromine will react with phenol, but it won't react with ethanoic acid. Calcium carbonate will react with ethanoic acid, but it won't react with phenol. And methanol with an acid catalyst will react with ethanoic acid, but it won't react with phenol. So A was right. Number eight, we're just gonna work out how many different carbon environments we've got in each of these. So A, they're equivalent. So that's one, that's obviously on its own, as is that, as is that, as is that. So we've got five in that one. Moving on to B, these are equivalent. So one, two, three, four, five. These are all equivalent, so one there, two, three, four. And the next one, um, they're equivalent, two, three, four, five. So five for that, whoops. Uh, so four in C, so C is the answer. Moving on to nine, so I've just drawn up the skeletal formula for this ester, so ethyl is obviously this part here, three methyl butanoate, so this is butanoate, these four carbons here with the C double bond O there, so carbon one, two, three, three methyl um, butanoate is that part. So what's the structural formula gonna be? Well, going this way, you've got two CH3 groups bonded to this carbon so you would write that as CH3 in a bracket twice C. There's only one in the options that has that, and it was D, so that's the answer. Moving on to 10, so just a reminder, allocyclic is a ring, but it can't be benzene. It can't be benzene anyway in this case because we've only got five carbons, but that's what I would say to my students. Allocyclic ring, but not a benzene ring. So C5H10 could be cyclopentane, could be methyl cyclobutane, and then there's a few with a cyclopropane ring, so you could have ethyl cyclopropane. 
1,1-dimethylcyclopropane or 1,2-dimethylcyclopropane. So there's five of them, C is the answer. Moving on to number 11, so I've just got the very basic um, type of equation here. So the hydrocarbon we're going to call CXHY. So every mole of carbon in the hydrocarbon will generate that many moles of CO2. So mass over MR for the CO2, there's that many moles of carbon dioxide, so there must be that many moles of carbon in the hydrocarbon. Next thing I'm going to do is turn that into grams by multiplying those moles by the MR of carbon, which is 12. Next thing I'm going to do is subtract that 0.922 from the 1 gram, and that's going to give us the mass of hydrogen, which comes out at 0.0782 grams. Obviously, dividing by 1 for the MR of hydrogen means there's that many moles as well. So then to get the ratio of carbon to hydrogen, we divide by the smallest number. So we're dividing both by 0.0768, which gets 1 to 1.01799, which is effectively 1 to 1, so the answer was A. Moving on to number 12, it's all down to the number of hydrogens, because they've all got uh, 18 carbons and 2 oxygens. The dots represent the hydrogens, and there are 24 there, so A was the answer. Question 13, so which of these statements are correct for gas chromatography? Components in a mixture can be identified from retention time. Yep, that's right. Relative peak area gives the proportions of the components in the mixture. That's right. Calibration curves are used to confirm concentrations of components. That's also correct. So all three right. A is the answer. Moving on to 14. So alkaline hydrolysis of one chloropropane can be represented by that reaction. And you'll see the organic product is propanol. So that one's right. Acid hydrolysis of propyl methanoate. The equation for that is on the screen now. And you'll see again, we've got propanol, that second product there. So that one was right. And there's the third equation. You'll notice there is no propanol as any of the products. So three wasn't right. So one and two only. B is the answer. And finally, question 15, just going to quickly run through the reaction between um, benzene and an acyl chloride. So I'm just representing that as RCOCl um, with an AlCl3 catalyst. The important thing is that the C double bond O part is bonded directly to the benzene ring. So we're looking for that in the structures of these three products. So in one, we don't have that. We've got CH2, then the C double bond O, so that's not right. Um, this one here, yep, yeah, we've got a C double bond O and an H of it, so 2 is okay. And 3 is okay as well, because you've got C double bond O, then CH3. 2 and 3 only, C was the answer.